Hey everyone, today on the Plastic Canvas I'm going to show you what comes with Etherfields by Awaken Realms. and welcome to the first episode in this Etherfield series. Now later episodes in this series will be dedicated to me painting the minis, but for today we're kicking it off by lifting the lid and having a look at what comes in the box to give you an idea about whether this would be a game that you would be interested in buying or not. Now we obviously got this through Kickstarter, we ticked a couple of boxes to get some extras. I can't remember exactly what comes in the core box and what the extra things are that we got, so I'm not going to distinguish between them in this video, I'm just going to show you what we've got to give you an idea of how the game looks, the art style and the overall production quality, especially the minis, to give you an idea about whether this is a game that you'd be interested in or not. So let's head down and start with the box cover and let's have a look at what comes with Etherfields. Alright, so here's our box cover and being Awaken Realms, you know that the artwork is going to be amazing and this does not disappoint at all. This is an awesome looking box cover. It is a pretty well known box cover by now because it does ha it has been designed to look as though, you know, if you put it up against the correct backdrop, that, you know, part of the box is actually carved out. Does it have that effect in person? Well, not really, it does lose that a bit, but that doesn't matter because the artwork is just awesome. So, off to a great start. I love this, but let's lift the lid and have a look at what comes in the box. Alright, so the first thing to have a look at is the game manual or just the rule book. There is a bit of glare on this, so I'll try and hold it so that I can keep the glare away. Um, you can see lots and lots of contents. I have had a quick little flick through this. One thing that I have noticed that there is quite a bit of text in this to read. There does look to be enough images, I guess, to further explain things with examples and arrows just to show you how, you know, movement and things like that works. So I'm sure it's not going to be an issue, but that is just a thing that I have noticed that there is quite a bit of text. But Full colour, looks really, really good. Um, so, yep, so that's our rule book. Now, this uh, booklet here is called The Secret Scripts, and this looks to be where all of the different entries are that you'll be referred to during the story to find out exactly what's happening. So I'm not going to really look through or show you too much in this, just enough of a flick through just to show you how it actually looks. So lots and lots of text, looks like there'll be lots of story to go through. Um, one thing I did just have a quick look at is the numbers here, and it doesn't look like any of them have actually been skipped. And and the last number here is 1,232, so I'm guessing that there is just over 1,200 entries in this book. So lots to go through, so you won't be running short on story anytime soon. Uh, here we've got some various uh, tokens, punch-outs to do. Um, these are the masks. I might just quickly open this up, see what we've got inside. Alright, so, oh, there goes one right there. Um, really good thickness on these, and they seem to be a really, really good quality. Just like Tainted Grail, Awaken Realms, last sort of major game, really good quality there as well. Um, artwork, very cool, very thematic. So you, you've get a, get a pretty good sense from this about whether this is going to be a game that you'll enjoy playing or not. Um, more masks there. Uh, looks like some player boards. Uh, Active progression cards, various tokens, more characters, specialist, tough guy. So lots to punch out there. Again, really, really cool artwork, lots of good colours. More punch outs, all really good thickness, so all really good quality. Then here we've got, these are called Dreamgate tile envelopes. So these are obviously just going to be used throughout the game. I guess things get slotted into there. Um, but again, a little bit of artwork on there looks pretty cool. Uh, this is just a letter that's just a thank you to Kickstarter backers. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's not really much in there to be seen. Uh, these are just some different card holders to be used throughout the game. A couple of different sizes. Um, maybe um, there are some square and rectangle cards, so they'll go in certain ones there. Um, but they're just some card holders. 
Then we've got our board. Now I'll open this up. I'll get, I don't know if this will fit. We'll see as much of it as we can. Oops, keeps on going. Oh, yep, really, really good size board. So, yep, so you can just see spots for cards. Uh, so good outlines there just to show what's going to fit where. Um, you know, quite a grim sort of look to it. But again, all very thematic. Artwork looks really, really cool. Um, and again, board is really, really good quality. So, yeah, that's really cool. All right, so here we've just got an insert to remove and straight off we can see tons and tons of different cards. We've got some smaller decks down here and then we've got some thicker ones across here. All the ones along this side are this sort of rectangular side and then all of the ones on this side are more square shaped. Now I'm not going to go through each of these decks but I have just taken the plastic off this one here just to save a little bit of time so I can show you just what this one looks like. Uh, there's no reason why I picked out this one, it was just one sitting in the middle there. So you can see here on this side we've got giant rats, here we've got the new order machine and then this one here has some sort of location on it. Same as that one, same as that one. So you can see there's a bit of a mix from one card to another. There doesn't necessarily seem to be like a consistent type of image. So I'm not sure exactly how they all work, but the color's amazing, artwork's really, really cool. And just the text layout looks to be similar to how it is in Tainted Grail. And those are pretty easy to follow along. So I think these should be good as well. On the back, there's not a lot of information except for what looks to be some sort of a reference as a guide for how it goes onto the board. But yep, they look really, really cool. Um, in terms of quality, they just seem to be what you'd expect. They're not too thick, but not too thin. So yeah, really, really impressed with them. And again, just the sheer number of them. So I'll pop them back into there. If we just have a quick look at these, you can see uh, this one looks to have some sort of an effect shining. If you are in a red space, gain one blue token. I don't know at the moment what that refers to. These are influence cards. I don't know what these other ones are as well. So those are more influence cards. And then we've got oh, more influence. Uh, those ones there don't have anything on the back. Still got, oh, it looks to be in a type of equipment. Now, uh, what else have we got? Wisdom. So, yeah, looks to be quite a few different types of cards. Those ones don't have anything on them either. So, yeah, lots of variety within the cards. Uh, just over here, this little um, package here. Now, I know that these are some upgrade stuff. So, these big keys here, they're uh, like a collector's item sort of thing. So, they're not used in the game. They're purely just for collecting. And then these here are an upgrade that we got. These metallic keys replace the cardboard ones that do come in the core game. So, yeah, you would get cardboard ones, but we upgraded to the metal ones. And then we've just got lots of different tokens in here. Again, haven't played the game yet, so I don't know what these are actually for. But obviously markers of different descriptions. They're all good plastic, good sort of engraving in them, a bit of detail and texture. We've got some blue gems, uh, some more yellow markers. Then we've got white plastic tokens, black ones. Oh, these ones here are little oh, bags open. These are little standees for... Uh, cards I'm guessing to go in. So maybe the enemies, maybe there are enemy cards that stand up and go into there. Not too sure, but yep, that's in there as well. We've got some custom dice. Sort of, you know, they feel good. They're not weighty, but they seem to be good. And then we've got some clear and then some red tokens as well. But again, good size, good quality. So yeah, overall production's really, really good. And now if you're a miniature painter like me, this is of course the best part, the miniatures. The thing that I immediately notice about these is just how varied each of them are. There is no real consistent theme to it. Now I've got a bit of an understanding that it's a bit of a nightmare type theme. So, you know, we have some that look really, really creepy. You know, so you've got a dude like this with, I don't even know what he's supposed to be. Looks like he's holding some sort of a weapon. Got a really creepy long mask type thing on. 
but then you've got a penguin carrying a brief cat with a top hat on. So just a really cool bit of variety in the miniatures. So for painting these, it's going to be awesome because lots of, you know, different colors and techniques and things from one miniature to another. They're a really good size, fantastic detail. They're really solid. Um, and, you know, when I painted Tainted Grail, one thing that I really liked about those miniatures was that they weren't over the top detail that they were really complicated and daunting to paint but there was enough in them that you could do some really cool effects that were lots and lots of fun to paint so there's some of them there and then we've got some more underneath as well these are a little bit bigger um so if we have a look at one like this you can see this is a guy on some sort of mechanized robot kind of thing got these cool angel wings so these ones are a little bit bigger and then we have our main one here. Now, I don't know if this comes in the core box or not. This might be an extra one that we got, but this miniature is absolutely insane. This is a really, really good scale. You can see it against my hands there. Amazing detail in this. I'm really, really looking forward to painting this one. But anyway, so there's our miniatures. So hopefully that gives you a good look into what the game sort of feels like, what the type of theme is, and the overall production quality, both in the artwork quality of the cards and the miniatures as well. So you've got a good idea about whether this is a game that will be of interest to you or not. So that'll do it for our unboxing. Future videos in this series are going to be me painting these miniatures. So stick around, subscribe if you haven't yet, if you want to see how I paint these up. But until next time, this is Matt from The Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy gaming and happy painting, everyone. Cheers.